welcome to Just for the Record First 100 Days, a program where we discuss with members of the House of Assembly their achievements and challenges faced in the first 100 days since the April general election. I'm your host, Jacko Whitting, and today I am joined by representative for the second district, Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull. We discuss his achievements and challenges, as well as his goals for District 2 after this quick break. Stay tuned for more Just for the Record after these messages. Father Jesus, that line you long like church service. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut front of people. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of you. What? No, no man can take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, <laughs> You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up power? Eh? Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. And of course, Honorable Turnbull, thank you for being here today. It's my pleasure, Jaco, and thank you for having me. Good day and greetings to the people of the Virgin Islands, especially my wonderful second district community. All right. Now, you're not new to being a member of the House of Assembly. If I'm correct, this is your third time elected as representative. That is correct. All right. Now, how do you feel about your first 100 days? How would you grade your own performance so far? <laughs> well, Jaco, I, I think the first 100 days, I will go back to two days prior. Mm -hmm. um, so I will go back to 98 days. And 98 days, we reflect on what we, come, what we came through from the hurricanes of 2017. And that's a place where we were reminded that we were indeed stronger together, that we understood the fabric of our Virgin Islands people, that we looked out for one another, that we cared and concerned, were concerned about each other, and we gave from a place of concern, from a place of love, um, and reflecting on where we've come from and looking to where we are now, um, even being reelected for the third term. It's, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's a feeling that is humbling is a feeling that is nostalgic is a feeling that reminds me that this great little nation called the british virgin islands is filled with possibilities so i am excited to be here representing once again the people of the second electoral district um, i'm grateful to them grateful to god grateful to my family and my committee for their hard work for their dedication and for their confidence in me and i look forward to continuing to build these virgin islands because we know what we were up against um, from April 2022 uh, to having our constitution suspended and being one of the ones to be chosen to try to help um, stare off the UK from having the constitution suspended. Some other things happen, the politics and the campaigning and all the things happen, but we are to a place that we have to continue to build and develop the people of the BVI and put infrastructure, put systems in place so that our young people, as well as those that came before us, that we are bridging the gaps and building a country that we can all be proud of. Right. Now, I understand that you recently commenced your first round of community meetings since the election. Yes. What's the plans behind that and what's it been like so far? So, so far we, com we completed four meetings. Last night was the mayor's meeting. On Monday, we started in Bruce Bay. Uh, King Garden Bay had to be rescheduled to next week, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, because we were in the House of Assembly and I got there about an hour late. So persons um, agreed that we would go and have the meetings next week. Just Van Dyke, we had on Wednesday, and last night we were at the Enos Am School for the people in the hill. Because if I start to call <laughs> all the names, Jacko, we'll get in, in trouble. But it was to, to, to go back to the basics. 
go back to the people of the second district community. I am not going to do anything without them. They have elected me to be their leader, but mm -hmm. I am leading a people based on their direction, based on the things that they want to accomplish, they want to see, they want to achieve. And one of the things that my, my mantra now is that we are stronger together. So in all those meetings, the, the push was to understand whatever we need in the second district, or whatever we need, even in the Virgin Islands, we have the capacity, we have the resources, we have the knowledge right here amongst us. So we will build a second district, the infrastructure and the things that we need, we will build it with the resources and the ingenuity of the people that we have. Um, and I'm, I'm doing it with my community. So there's a lot of private public partnerships planned. Mm -hmm. um, we have a back to school plan where we don't do it the traditional way. Um, for the last four years, we've changed it. And I go to the six schools okay. in my district. I have six schools in my district. <laughs> Uh, and we give supplies to the schools for any student. Um, doesn't matter if they live in the, in the community or not, but any student that may be falling short with supplies and even the teachers, we give accordingly so that they could use it all year round. Because you know when you have the back to school, you have some of the repeat um, persons come in, yeah. which, which is a norm. But I, I believe the approach that we have is more effective, has, has proven more effective. And we have done some cleanups as well. So the community meetings were, were very informative. Um, uh, they were selfish on my part because I asked more questions of the people of my communities, um, the areas that concern them, that is concerning everyone, um, the areas of water, the areas of the road infrastructure, the area of just getting simple things done, the community centers um, that were a hot topic and mm -hmm. became a political football. I was able to ask those questions yesterday in the House of Assembly. The restroom in Bruce Bay, yeah. um, just Van Dyke, the roads, the public work department, the water and sewage department. Those are the things. Why are we not using the Albert E. Shinnery, uh Customs Building that there's a bottleneck down in Dog Falls? You have the Just Van Dyke Ferry. Then you have the Rumneys when they have a cruise ship. Then, then you have Aquatic Ferry. Then you have the St. John Ferry. And all persons are gathering at one location that's creating a bottleneck. So you have international as well as local guests cramped in the same place but you have a whole nother facility that we spent a whole lot of money on yeah. after the hurricanes of 2017 that we're not utilizing so i'm calling on the premier and, and minister of finance who's responsible for customs and immigration to deploy more officers so that we can create that environment that we're known for which is tourism which is paradise the second district community i will keep saying it is the tourism hub of the virgin islands here on Tortola and Just Van Dyke, just like what Virgin Gorda and Anigata are to tourism to the BVI. So we have to ensure that it is beautified, that we're, we're not just keep digging up holes and having potholes over the place and having bush overtake us. It is important, but I have now made it my pledge. I've started in the last term. I'm going to cut bush with my community until my hand blister. <laughs> but whatever we need to do, we're going to do it together because we're going to realize our strength. And then if government chooses to partake and get involved, then we'll welcome it. But we're not going to sit on our laurels. We're not going to be lazy. Um, and I'm going to give it all I got, 100% of my time. All right. Now, of course, we've seen evidence of this bush cutting activity that you've been engaging in um, over on the Turnbull for Change yes. Facebook page. Now, of course, with you speaking about the community meetings and you getting down in the streets and, you know, getting active with the community. Does this speak to an increased communication effort from your end with your district? Of course, you've been very active in the past, but this additional draw for information from the public, is that part of a new process? It's, it's returning to basic, mm -hmm. returning to what got us elected, got me elected in the first place, where the priority is the people. Um, one of the things that I was accused of, and, and all through the campaign trail, and even the, my opponents, um, used it was that when we were forming or had to form the unity government to try to keep the UK from suspending our constitution, um, being appointed as minister, I got, and, and that's, that's my mindset, and I've said it in all four meetings. My mindset is because I'm trained in finance, if you give me a problem, I go tunnel vision, I'm dealing with the problem. And I, I was accused, and I accepted, and I apologized to the people privately during the campaign trail and even publicly during the meetings that um, 
I understand what they said and I accept it and I apologize that, you know, they felt neglected. They felt like I was focusing more on country and not so much on the district. So this time around, I'm going back to basics. So no matter what comes, um, if it means premiership, if it means deputy premiership or minister or minister, not the people of the second district who put me here are going to be involved, are going to be included, and they're going to be with me every step of the way because they are the ones that put me here to represent them. And as we build the second district community, we will build the Virgin Island for a brighter future for the young people who are looking to be a part and be invested in this BVI that we call, this BVI that you have Demoy Hodge and you have uh, Kyron McMaster and Abdeja Hodge and other athletes and other professionals just shining. We have to now ensure that we as a government, we as leaders are raising the standard so that when people hear uh, Adeja Hodge and hear Kyron McMaster and they come to the BVI, it is reflected of excellence. And that's, that's my point. All right. Now, you made mention of Demoy Hodge. And of course, you had a very strong hand in ensuring that he felt celebrated and that his achievements were highlighted in the second district during his time here recently. Can you tell us a bit about that? Stay tuned for more Just for the Record after these messages. When you're in need of air conditioning, installation, repairs, or replacement services, Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration has the professional technicians, equipment, parts, and ACs to get the job done right. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration carries top brands like Daikin, Aircon, Mitsubishi and more. We're open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Located in Fish Bay. Telephone 340-4114 or 343-9511. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration. Providing exceptional services to the British Virgin Islands since 2015. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Now, you made mention of Demoy Hodge, and of course, you had a very strong hand in ensuring that he felt celebrated and that his achievements were highlighted in the second district during his time here recently. Can you tell us a bit about that? Demoy Hodge is, is like a little brother, like a nephew, um, somebody that I, I had the responsibility his, his mother and his father gave me uh, the opportunity to mentor and to tutor him from Sunday school to youth fellowship. Now, even in his adulthood, uh, we, we talk on a regular basis. We've done interviews and just help him where I can, just sharing the experiences in my life. But where Demoy Hodge is now with the accomplishments that he's made with his cousin, J.R. Halstead Shivington, and his coaches, Dennis Gates, and everybody to the world stage in the NBA, Demoy Hodge is now walking a path that has never been trod. He's, he's walking a path and creating this avenue for the British Virgin Islands that we have to put support behind. But also, we now know that that is a formula. JR, his cousin JR, and the team behind him, they created a formula. So why not put something in place? And the Premier and I are, are discussing with, with Mr. Shivington and, and his team um, plans to create this avenue. Same thing for Adesia and Kai. We have to create this avenue. It's a, almost like a Nemo stream. Create the avenue that persons who are interested, in, but not just for sport, in any area, um, whether you talk about sports analytics, whether you talk about business, whether you talk about entrepreneurship, whatever it may be, we have the opportunity to do so. So Des Moines is very special to me. Kyron McMaster is, is a cousin of mine. Um, but about... Above it being their relationship with me, they're from this territory like I am. And whatever we can do to promote them, uh, my hashtag is simply I believe. And I will continue to believe in them and believe in all the young people once they're willing to continue to fail, continue to push ahead. Because I'm saying continue to fail because you don't get it right the first time. So you fail and you fall forward and keep um, aspiring to your goals. I spoke to Des Moines 
um, as recent as yesterday. Um, and he's, he's excited to, to be where he is. Um, I'm hoping to be um, at one or three or four, a lot of the <laughs> games that are going to be coming up. But mm -hmm. it, it's an exciting time for, for us here in this territory. But we have a job to do. And I believe as representative for the second district, it was um, his parent, his mom, her team, and the entire King Gardner community. We had also had the Bay people reunion at the same time. So we gave him keys to the city from the Bay people reunion. We gave him keys to the city from the King Gardner Baptist Church. So he is on top. Um, he has access, and we've put up billboards. But those are the things we have to celebrate because that could, for me, um, through my time as youth mentoring, it is said that for every one positive word, there are 25 negative words. And in our society now, given all that's going on, there's about 50 negative words to one positive. So I don't mind the negative. I'm going to keep pushing positivity um, for those that want to hear it because it doesn't make sense if I'm pulling you down. I could push you up and we're all going to rise together. So for me, it's about upliftment. It's about development. It's about empowerment of this BVI because that's what we started. Little education, little resources, but we had a will, we had a determination to build up each other. And this BVI that you see some 70 or 80 years didn't come just by sitting, didn't just come by negativity. If you keep paying attention to the negative, you'll never move forward because I can't look back and be going forward. I'm going to put up into something. And I use that popular colloquial put up. You ain't putting up. <laughs> All right. Now, that definitely speaks well for your encouragement and your interest in developing the youth. Another demographic you speak so much about is the elderly. Mitch loves his old people. You always have to mention it, right? It's so important. what are your plans for that demographic? My plans are to get them more involved, get them more engaged. Um, the community centers in, in my district, uh, just for night primary school is being finished. So that would probably help um, once, once it's finished. Uh, the date that we got was in October for 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get that open, get those seniors involved, get them coming together uh, to meet, to share stories so that they can have that camaraderie. Um, the centers in, in Bruce Bay and King Artemis, those need to be so that they can have a place. Right now, the seniors go between Rotan and Caribbean. And we, yeah. we celebrate um, the, the leaders of those, those groups, but we need to have our elders and our gems in their location so that they can share and they will bait their parts and their crafts and put, spend time together, even on their iPads, and, and learn and keep up with what's going on. It, it's that time for me where I believe we are able to pull from them, the history and the heritage, the culture of who we are, how we became who we are. And one of the things that I don't want us to lose, while we welcome different persons from different parts of the world, different parts of the Caribbean, I will welcome anybody because I love all people. But what I don't want to do is welcome you at the expense of putting aside who I am and how I became to be. So we have to continue to promote. So for me, the elders are extremely important because they give you, they keep me grounded in understanding where we came from, how they were able to do so much with so much less. But it is important that we glean from them while also building up our young people so we bridge the gap for people. All right. Now, of course, you've set a significant pace for yourself moving forward from this first 100 days. But whether it's good, there's also bad. I wouldn't expect everything to be, have been smooth sailing. So yeah. what would you say are some of the challenges that you have faced so far? Well, the challenges are just understanding and trying to understand the government's um, I think over the last eight years, that has been one of the things that I'm trying to understand. What is your plan? What is your plan for the Virgin Islands? What are your priorities? How are we going to go from one thing to the next? It, it can't be this reactive approach to issues or happenings within the country, the storm, or COVID-19, or 
this tragedy or that. What is our plan? And if you have a plan, it is easy to work and set uh, objectives and goals to achieve those plans. So for me, those are the challenges. So And the approach this time around, um, as I've told the people of the second district, um, I can be confrontational. Um, I, I can stand up and fight on their behalf. But this time around, I, I, I've said to the premier, on behalf of the people of the second district, I'm going to present to you and your government. These are the things that we want to achieve in the second district. Where you can help me, help me. Where you can't help me, we'll try to find a way. But if you don't do anything, then I'm going to fall back to what I know. You shall uh, not which yield. Is to get, I, I will not yield. <laughs> uh, because there's so much that we can achieve. Uh, we have a budget of $400 million mm -hmm. every year that we've been not seeing it materialize into progress. And, and for me, that's, that's the most challenging thing. But where there's challenges, there's opportunity. Um, and I see a great opportunity in pulling on the private partnership, public partnership. So the business owners in, in, in my community, the business owners in the BVI, I'm going to be calling them and asking them for assistance to get things done. Because at the end of the day, we all have a vested interest. We can't wait for government to do everything, but we're not going to give government a pass to do nothing. So that's where, that's where I stand. That's where I, I sit right now. Um, we had questions in the House of Assembly. Um, but my questions moved over to last night. And it's tourism, um, trying to get an understandable plan that affects the people in my community, the road infrastructure, um, the water distribution system. It is not okay for government to keep telling me what exists and what the problems are. Let us address the problems. Let us find a way to make a decision. And the last time I was here, I shared with you the mantras that I am trying to live by each day. Vision, an effective leader has vision, the ability to make a decision. He has passion, he has discipline. We follow those four steps, I think we will get further along. The politics, four years from now, when we have campaign time, we could get into politics. Now it's time to do the work on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. We don't have much time to play. There's all kinds of forces against us, and we have to show that we were elected to make a difference, and that's what I intend to do for the people of the Virgin Islands, for the people of the Second District, is to leave that community better than I first met it when I was first elected in 2015. I'm going to give it everything that I have. I'm looking forward to my birthday. God spend my life on tomorrow, September 9th. Virgo gang, Virgo nation. Um, persons that don't like us, they have to love us. So you and Beyonce, anyway. okay? Yeah, Virgo season? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you're speaking of intentions. I want to know what are your intentions or what are some significant um, goals that you have for this boom in the sector? If I start in the education, five major things that I covered during uh, the meeting, that those five that I'm going to stick to. Ensuring that our students are all in environments that are apt for learning in this 21st And they are given every opportunity to succeed not just in the traditional education, but all facets of education. So whether it's the arts, whether it's different entrepreneurship that they want to that calculate the risk to go into business, make sure that the possibilities are available for them. Um, healthcare is extremely important. We have our elders, we have persons among us getting sick from a number of different uh, diseases. We have to address those type of issues. So where NHI has been failing and falling short, mm -hmm. not complain about what the problem is. Let's address the problem. Let's fix it so that we can have a healthy BVI. Our elders are living longer. Our young people are, are living longer. And some of them are, are having difficulty even with the crime and violence. That's my third one, mm -hmm. that we have to address it. This cannot be the norm, that the BVI, every couple of months, you hear a young person losing their life to gun violence or because of uh, illegal activities, that, that is not the norm. It would not be acceptable. Fourth thing for me is the infrastructure. Tourism in the, in the second district, you can't keep bringing people to your house if it's not presentable. 
So if I'm driving on the road every every hot hole, when you come out the fifth district and the fourth district and the first district and the third district, it's patola out of my district. But then you're taking them to the beaches. But on the way, what are you seeing? Overgrown trees. You're seeing garbage. That's not what that's not how you present the product. And for me, the fifth thing, water. You cannot tell me you're spending $24, $25 million in water and collecting less than $5 million for the last seven years, and you're comfortable repeating that every year. Let us prioritize our priorities and focus on one particular area, that the water infrastructure, the water distribution infrastructure, so you have to dig up all the roads, and I hope they start in the second district, dig up all the roads in the second district, to fix and redo the pipeline, pipe system, so that you can address that, then you could collect more money. You go to West End, you go to East End, you come in town, just prioritize your priorities. So for me in the second district, as I said, I'm going back to my basic, I'm going back to the beginning where it all started and I believe where the strength is with the people of the second district. I'm not leaving them behind and I know they're not gonna leave me behind. So if I can't get what I want and what we want to get achieved, considering all the things that have to happen in this country, I will bring the people of the second district to them. We will have a discussion. All right. Now, I have to admit that is one of my favorite quotes from you, prioritize your priorities. And it did remind me of something you said in the House of Assembly recently. Um, it also ties into crime and security. You mentioned your concerns um, regarding the presence of police in District 2, um, yes. King Garden Bay, and that also ties into it being a tourism hotspot. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Um, I, I believe, I, I don't, and the commissioner and his team, some may agree with me or not, the BVI has changed, and it's continued to change. So you can't tell me that you have a police state in King Garden Bay, and it's operating in a shift system where at 4.30, there's no one there. And then you have to call West End, which used to be 24 hours, but that has moved to the shift system. And you have to call and hope that the officers from West End can get to King Garden Bay or Bruce Bay or Mount Healthy or Mayaba or any of the areas in the second district within a timely manner. We have to increase the, the police presence. I know there have been some steps uh, taken since my last um, conversation in the House of Assembly where more offices has been increased. And I want to have, continue to have that relationship with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Board to ensure that community policing and police presence is felt, not just for the tourists, um, but for those of us that live there who have our families and, and, mm -hmm. and, and that would help to deter some of these acts of, of crime and violence and, and, and create this feeling that we are not only indeed a tourism destination, but we are indeed a country that is not one of them, that crime is continue to be on the rise and we are a crime ridden state. Um, not to have a police state, but to have a balance that people feel comfortable raising their children, going out to work and coming home and knowing that they have a peace of mind. So it is about those partnerships, having conversations, have communications, I'm not bashing anybody this time around, Jaco. I'm going to have a conversation and I'm going to document it. And if it goes south, then we have um, a different, yeah, different conversation. Set of words. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, with that, we're coming to the end of the interview. But I just want to give you a chance if you have anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today. Jaco, I want to say uh, for these first 100 days in office, I am grateful to God grateful to my family, grateful to my committee. I'm grateful to the people of the second district. And as I get older and I get more experience in this political arena, I realize that the responsibility that I have has nothing and has never had anything to do with me personally. I believe this purpose that I have is much greater than I am. And understanding that it gives me energy, it gives me the ability to go harder for this Virgin Islands that helped shape me and bring me to work. So I owe my life to the people of the Virgin Islands. I owe my life and my complete effort 
to the people of the second district to represent them as best as I could. Because when we look at where we've come from and look at where it's possible to go, I'm excited to be a part of that. So while I have this opportunity to lead, while I have this opportunity to serve, I'm going to give it my complete and utmost commitment. Because without commitment, there can be no progress. And without consistency, they'll never finish. So I plan to be committed, consistent, to ensure that the things that we want to achieve on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands specifically my second district community, are achieved, and we will do it because we are stronger together. God bless you, the people of the second district, and God bless the people of the Virgin Islands. Jaco, I thank you, as always, for having me on this. All right, and thank you so much for making time to be with us. Thank you so much. And viewers, thank you so much for staying tuned. Stay informed and stay tuned to Twit for Media. Of course, we have more great content coming up. This has been Just for the Record, First 100 Days with District 2 Representative, the Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull. I'm Jaco Whitting. Goodbye.